The Walter Jenkins episode raises grave questions of national security, which only the president can and must answer. The story up to now is only partially revealed. President Johnson, who talks about responsibility, now has the responsibility to explain why he has covered up for five and a half years since January 15, 1959, the fact that his top aide had been arrested on a similar perversion charge. Knowing, as the president must, the vulnerability of moral defenders to blackmail, the president should tell us whether Mr. Jenkins was permitted to sit in on meetings of the National Security Council, meetings of the cabinet, and otherwise given access to top military secrets. Mr. President. Walter. Walter. Sir. Walter, from where I sit, the White House has a pervert problem. But it is not Walter Jenkins. I'm sorry, sir, for the trouble. I haven't said it yet all enough. I saw a doctor, and I will again. Quit apologizing for what stinks of a framed put-up job. Sir? Plain as day. Look at this. Without inspecting it closely, you can see something's not right with it. Pervert is in different handwriting and ink than the rest. And disorderly conduct by itself could mean getting caught howling at the moon like a hound in heat. Add the pervert, which any man in the station could have done in five years, and build a scandal. Curious. You drank at the party. Martini, sir. Four. On an empty stomach. Well, the place was crawling with Goldwater goons. One of them could have slipped something in him. Since the service, Senator Goldwater has always been kind. How about that, Walter? You've had two bosses in your life. One's the president, and one's gunning to be. No issues with Goldwater when he was your commanding officer? Senator Goldwater rated my performance as excellent, sir. Well, that's something we have in common. A few men can say that about that Andy Choker. Who? Andy Choker. The fella from the John. What do you know about him? Practically nothing. Works at the Army Navy Club, where the Republican National Committee hangs out every day. Money troubles, transient. The kind of man that could partner with dirty cops for lenient treatment. Even so, sir. Choco couldn't have known I'd go to that men's room. He got there before I did. That's quite the hot potato of a pisser. I've since learned the DC Police Moral Squad stakes it out every night with four officers. See how I mean? The perverts are fixing to punish us. We gotta turn it back the other way around. Sir, Donna Capriole at Capital Discourse has the story. Well, uh, promise her something juicier. I offered her the readout of your private meeting with Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, well, leave out the part that America's sympathetic widow won't vote for me. Why won't she? This should be a vote for my husband. If I can't, I won't. It didn't work. Donna said this is bigger than Jackie Kennedy. Oh, nothing's bigger than Jackie Kennedy. That's what I told her, sir. Donna's using you to lobby for the editor-in-chief job. It's beneath her journalistic integrity and the magazines. It's not news. Well, not yet. She disagrees strongly, sir. Against her publication's wishes. 
for the national security angle. National security? Walter Jenkins would die before selling out America's secrets to protect any he may or may not harbor. I would. But the United States doesn't grant top secret security clearance to... People who can't be trusted. And that is not Walter Jenkins. It smacks of a right-wing conspiracy. If we thread the knit needle a little more precisely, I guarantee you the sweater will fit Goldwater. A man who ought never to be president. Still no recollection, Walter. I remember visiting the bathroom. Joker was there. After I entered the stall, a blur. Still is, sir. Well, no sense belly aching. The FBI will get to the bottom of it. The FBI, sir. Well, somebody needs to answer for how, when, and why that pervert got put there. The Secret Service passed you on your background check because the DC police handed over a record they say had no pervert on it. Their interviewee list goes back farther than a wide receiver chasing a Hail Mary, from your college roommate to the chief of police. Somebody's lying to me, and the Bureau will report on it. Walter, you've always been straight with me. That's why I've always kept you beside me. From Congress, to the Vice Presidency, to the Presidency. 25 years, sir. You really can't remember being in that stall with Choka. No, sir. My mind was befuddled. How's Margie holding up? Angry, hysterical, bitter. No, no woman, woman wants, wants this, this for her family. Walter. Mr. President, you all right? I'm almost finished. Walter, you are the only man I've ever trusted with my wife and my life. But like an old man in my county used to say, a jackass in a hailstorm just has to hunker up and take it. Sir? Back on the plane, after the oath, Jackie said to me, what cruel irony that you take this journey without a vice president, after all you did for Jack. That's when I sent for you to greet us on landing. Fortunately, you've been at my side. And now for the country, I need you not to be. Sir? I've got to earn it this time. The American people elected Kennedy. Oswald gave me the top job. After the civil rights hubbub, there can be no kinks in my candidacy. Nothing that rubs Southerners the wrong way like a burdock in the buttocks. We just can't win it. The average American farmer can't understand us knowing it and approving it. Sir. On issues of morality, especially, the presidency mustn't look weak. Your poll, 30 points ahead of Senator Gore. You can handily win in three weeks. 
Move Margie and the kids back to Texas, Walter. Pick up where you left off for everyone's benefit. Walter? Mr. President. Walter, if what happened in that men's room comes back, I'd want to hear it privately. And it will. We're done here. Coming out? I'm not ready yet. You're on your own then. <laughs> 